All right, welcome everybody. So yeah, I'm recording this, so whoever misses this, you know, we keep all our development log on the wiki. It's under OSC. It's under development team log on a wiki. So so you can see all these videos uh, and everything from our history. Let me paste the link to that development team log. So if you want to see any of our former meetings, you can take a look at there. Let me share my screen as well so that you can follow where are we at? So that's the dev team log. Uh, I will po post last week's, two weeks ago, design sprint. So you can see basically uh, videos, agendas for meetings. So there it is. So let's go to the open source golf cart page. Um, last week, two weeks ago, last session, um, basically the way the process works, we collaborated on the CAD, co collaborated on a design doc. Uh, so go to, I'm pasting the design doc. So if you go in there. Yeah. Open source golf cart. So the progress from last time is generating a few few parts for the li part library. The way it works, it's like um, kind of like encyclopedia entries. Like each part of whatever we design is documented or put in. So so take a look at a golf cart, right? So you've got uh, any com complex mechanical devices made up of parts, and if you can uh, break down the parts. You can allocate people to each of the, the parts and start doing the design. So it, it ends up with having a, an organized set of parts and we do that through the part library like we have here. So from last time we got a few parts like the hydraulic motor, uh, some of the frame, uh, some of the seat, power cube elements, and so forth. So what we can do is continue on that process. idea is to uh, come up, I guess, the goal for today. See, see how far we can go in composing that into something that looks like, uh, like a golf cart. So, if you take the frame, you add the wheels, wheels to it, the wheel motor and the wheels. Uh, there's, um, there's a seat. There's the engine unit. There's hydraulic hoses that come from that go from the hydraulic valves. So it's a hydraulically operated thing running on a power cube. Um, if you go to the design document, uh, the first thing we started with last time was to divide the, the project into different parts and tackle the parts independently. So, go into the open source golf cart. Um, and if you have FreeCAD, you can download all the parts from the part library and see how they look. Now. Okay, as this loads up here, current working concept is a 5x8 body of the golf cart with a power cube sitting on um, front or back. We'll see how it how it looks. Uh, it's a covered it's a covered frame. So as you see, like this, um, if you look up page four, um, one way to do a frame is you make six flat sides and that turns into a cube and that's where that's gives you like a rollover protection cage for the structure and then um, put a roof on it put wheels on it so that's what what we can do today uh, so start looking at assembling the parts onto the frame but there's a few parts missing so see, see what we can we can do here um, so slide number five I guess that probably from Abe how you fit um, a seat into a metal frame yeah, I kind of look at it as once we get the frame, uh, we can, you can st span the frame, like once you have the frame, you can put like vertical connections or horizontal connections, like wherever, like you got to fit stuff, you can put more like angle or other supports where you can mount other components to it. Um, let's see. So let's look at the part libraries. Like what we did last time was... Uh, just with a few people that we had, we, we broke down 
try to list as many of the components as we could and then add names to them so uh, we can still do that today and see see what we can do how we can allocate this role allocation for today so taking a look at some more parts that are needed like for example on the motors uh, the motors and a frame and a power unit kind of like the main things in this device but for the motors there's a few things that we still need like for example how do you mount the motors themselves to the to the frame that would be through motor mount plates so something that fits the bolt pattern on the on the front of the motor and would attach to the to the frame uh, we also would need a motor hub because you need to attach a wheel to this motor um, that motor actually like um, if you look at page eight it's got a tapered shaft with uh, what's known as a castile nut um, so basically there's a hub coupler that goes on top of this and connects to a wheel bolt pattern and we can use something like uh, regular car wheels which are low cost accessible everywhere like 15 inch car wheels would be a good easy thing to do now what we're doing here is using four of these motors so let me just go and start a new page here and duplicate slide um, so wheel mounting like let's let's kind of focus on a wheel mounting because if you have a box with wheels uh, and, a, and an engine you can drive this thing so so let's do wheel system how about um uh, we set on skid steer then because uh it might tear off the turf quite a lot i had to end up with something that wasn't allowed on a golf course yeah for the simplest iteration we can do all kinds of things afterwards but but i think for the simplest one uh, otherwise you need a whole bunch of components that we didn't have here like like steering like a whole steering column with linkages and all that it would be much more complicated than so we'd want to do that but for later versions we can do anything for ease of build you want to do this since you can eliminate all those other parts then it will be uh, skid steering is not as gentle as turning but I think we'd want to go with that at least for version one where we want to do a quick prototype and see how that works and then uh, if we find it's pretty sure it's gonna work though, right? I Say mean, it again. It's just like a simple machine. Do we really need to do that experiment? Do we need to do that experiment? Yeah, like you're pretty sure it's gonna work pretty good, right? Maybe we should just <laughs> assume it's gonna work and cut the chase, um, make a like a rack and pinion steering or something. Well, Otherwise, we're building that, so. Um, No, rather not. Rather not right now. Why? Why wouldn't it work? It can. No, I mean, depends what you, what what you want to. Saying. You know, it's get gonna work it. okay. You know, skid steering is gonna work fine. That it's gonna what? That it's gonna work okay. Like you know, the whole machine's gonna work as you expect it to, pretty much, right? That's an assumption. I mean, we, without building something and actually doing it, you learn a lot during the process. I mean, we've never built one of these these things, so. Uh, you can that's where you can go from like it either takes you like you know we can literally build this thing in like a day or two or a weekend right but if we had to do if we had to do uh, say full steering I mean that would be a whole bunch of more development I don't know if this thing would ever get built um, okay well we could at least think think ahead during the design to like leave some provisions so that we can modify this prototype rather than making a whole new one that's good steering, right? It's, I mean, sorry uh, for, uh, well, for it's opinion. completely modular. So, okay, so say you got the ste the, the so-called proper steering. I mean, that would be a whole module that you'd have to fit on the frame. I mean, if you want to, you know, steering is, we will use it in other, you know, in the future, other machines and so forth. Uh, it's doable. We can, we can start it. But, I mean, if we want to focus on just getting this thing done, it's a question of, okay, how much effort are we going to spend to get... Uh, a simple iteration versus going more long term. So if you want to do rapid iteration, you want to do keep it pretty simple, and yeah. then go from there. There's also a lot to be said for having something that you could sell right away, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, and it's also cost too. Like, 
like the steering, I mean, that's going to add, I don't know, I haven't gone through the numbers, but it's going to also add those numbers up. Uh, so if you want to talk about a minimum prop, like for example, with a skid steering, it's something yeah. that anyone can do, like bam, just simple project. So depends what the goals are, but right now, for right now, it's, I would say, max accessibility to an, to an average person, which means, I mean, it's, it's potential that, you know, this thing works and it's a simple experiment. A lot of people can actually end up building it. So the more complications you put on top of it, the less people are going to be able to build it. Uh, so if you talk about making money and producing it, it's possible that a simple version may be, may be better. You don't know. You gotta kind of see how well it works. Okay. And we can modify it later. Absolutely. I mean, everything's modular, so we can um, we can do that. Um, so let's get into like how do you mount motors on this? Now, also just another thing, Anthony, on uh, if you talk about steering, that would at this point pretty much eliminate the four wheel drive aspect, because once you add uh, steering to a four-wheel drive system that gets you to much more complication there. That's, so it's, that's what I'm saying. It's like yeah. I don't know if we'll ever do this <laughs> if we we'll ever end up building it if we went through some more complications. Yeah. So the advanced part is that it's a four-wheel drive thing. That not a lot of people make four-wheel golf carts. I mean, golf carts are typically two-wheel drive uh, unless you get yeah. the you know the Gator types and more expensive machines. There they're going to be four-wheel drive, but uh, you sure we four. shouldn't just respect the wisdom there? Like maybe maybe they found that they didn't really need four-wheel drive or something. You give them a manicured golf cart. Or manicured it golf depends course. what you want to use it for. Like if if you're at, I can tell you right now, I uh, a two-wheel drive machine right yeah. here on our rough land would would not be much use. I mean we get stuck in a sand yeah, everywhere. Sure. So okay. so if you want to go into the forest, maybe like pick out some logs or whatever, you know carry stuff all over, not, not just on smooth terrain. I mean, golf cart is just for that. It's primarily for flat, cured ground, which is not the case here, definitely. Um, let's talk about, so, so let's talk, let's draw, draw up a, a little bit on the motors. So, okay, so picking the motor from page nine. So simple diagram, okay. So we got four of these. We gotta mount them to our frame. Um, wheel mount plate basically follows the so motor mount plate. That's a, that's the thing we're talking about. Uh, motor mount plate is gonna be how you're gonna attach this to the frame. For bolt pattern, we can re read up our existing CAD uh, half inch plate or three eighths inch plate would probably do. Um, I'd say um, let's talk about that. So for motor mount plate, for the heavy machines that we've done here, like tractors, we typically use like um, half inch plates to mount wheels. On here, I would say like three eighths inch steel plate would do it for bolt pattern uh, from get that right from the, the CAD that we have, which Katie already did, so thank you Katie for that, it was pretty good. Um, frame so we got a frame here <clears throat> the attachments, now the wheels so wheel attachment. So you need like a, a disc where where you would have a bolt pattern for wheels to bolt through. So if you get a wheel off a of a car, it has like a probably a five bolt pattern. So we would take five bolt pattern. Now what happened there? Five bolt pattern from a um, from a standard. So I have to look that up. Uh, Google it. What does a bolt pattern look like? Or get it off off online somewhere. Get a five standard 
five hole standard bolt pattern. What is it? We'll have to figure out. Five hole. Um, Oh, cool. I found the conversion chart from four hole to five. I assume it'll match the motor, but I'll double check. Yeah. Um, that's Katie? Yeah, that's Katie. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, so for so five standard bolt pattern. Are you saying that you, you look like you found something that attaches to the motor? Because there's two parts. Um, the hub that goes on a motor with it so that motor is actually going to have a tapered shaft mm -hmm. um so we need like a tapered hub okay <clears throat> for the shaft i don't know where we get that like, i haven't really looked into that tapered hub for the shaft but we can uh, start looking tapered hub for the shaft now, if that hub already has the five bolts on that, that's good enough for, for mounting a, a car wheel directly, so we have to match those two. Now, what if it, uh, what if we can't find it? Well, we have to make it. Like, uh, ideally, we have a hub, and that hub will have the right pattern for the wheel. If not, there's going to be a, it's going to be much more complicated. We're going to have to custom custom fabricate. So ideally, let's find ideally find find correct hub for a car wheel. Now, uh, what if we can only find some kind of a hub for some other wheel? Well, we can consider getting that other wheel. It depends what we find. So it's kind of an iterative thing. If you if you see that it's easy to find a hub that fits, great. Now the other thing to do is get a yeah. So see that's all the all the trickery comes in when you have to join moving parts together like wheels onto hubs or shaft couplers. That's that's like the hard. Part. Go ahead. Yep. Katie, are you saying something? No, I think that was just a sneeze. Oh, okay. Um, so let's let's talk about just a little bit of detail on that. So, like, say we, um, well, let's see. Let's get, let's, yeah, so. Uh, in a work document here. Okay, so we got one of these motors. It's kind of, uh, I'll just keep that image there. Or maybe, maybe detail that. I'll just free freehand draw that. But what do we need there? So, so we've got this motor face. You got this tapered shaft that I'm drawing. Okay, so kind of got something like this. And I got your hydraulic motor like that. Okay, so shaft is right there, all right? So the hub, let's start drawing the hub. So, so one hub type would be we can get a hub that's just this piece. It'll essentially be a coupler of some sort, a thing that fits over here. Uh, remember, there's a big nut. There's going to be a nut here, this cast steel nut. It's a thing that, if you look at a motor on the end of it, you see this thing that looks like a castle, hence the name cast steel. But this is the cast steel nut that, because the shaft has got a, a thread on it, and this cast steel nut clamps down over this thing that you put on it, which is the um, hub. Call it the hub. Um, so let's call it 
get a big arrow to that, call it the hub. And then, yes, yeah, so anyone who's on a call here, you can also edit this, so you can also help edit this too. But that's the Castile nut. Uh, so the Castile nut threads on the shaft of motor. So you you put that nut. It's literally like goes on the shaft. It screws down on a shaft. Um, and it fits on that weird hex shape. Yeah, it has to. It's like. It's, this thing is is a custom part so so if you google okay so how do how do you find it so so tapered hubs tapered uh, oh yeah i'm looking at those it's a one in. inch taper yeah for five holes but it seems yeah. one inch is actually kind of standard non-standard non standard yeah i mean i'm sure it's a standard but it doesn't seem common yeah so Okay, so somewhere we find this hub. Now, the hub may already have something like uh, a piece on it with the bolt pattern of a wheel, like lugs for wheels. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not have it. If, it. if it doesn't have it, we can weld something on or if it's got a bad bolt pattern and we're convinced on using like regular car wheels because they're really cheap and accessible we'll cut off the like just torch off the the bolts off it and maybe like weld weld our own like a superposing plate that's got the right bolt pattern so it's going to have whatever like lugs for bolts those are bolt lugs and it's going to have like however many like like five or something of them whatever it is that's kind of looking from the side so you got that um something like that yeah so ideal we find this hub with bolt pattern uh, and that's going to be like, okay, we're going to have to look for that. Bolt lugs on hub. So that would be bolt lugs on the hub. Now, ideally, surplus center, where we got the the motor, they would have the the couplers and... Uh, but yeah, but, but they're not. They at least somebody somebody asked under the in product questions, "Do you have a hub that will fit this motor?" <laughs> right. Which they said no. No. Okay. Um, but I can go to the manufacturer. I would maybe assume that the manufacturer would create compatible items. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we can go to. You found out. You know, you found everything about the manufacturer. Like, you got the brand, right? That was White Hydraulic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and maybe White Hydraulics has access to... Maybe they sell the couplers or something. Uh, but we could say, like, okay, uh, define the characteristics of the hub. So it says, like, in the description, it says one-inch tapered, but it's one-inch by two and three sixteenths inch shaft. So when it says one inch tapered, does it mean the fat part is one inch or like the narrow part of it is one inch? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's like down the middle or something. <laughs> the middle part is maybe like one inch. So, you know, the worst case is you go to a machine shop and you have them actually take a piece of coupler, put on a lathe and bore it out so it's tapered like that. Uh, which yeah, would be cool. expensive because that's shop time and that's going to be like 
at least like one hour of labor or such. Uh, it's probably like a hundred bucks per coupler. So like 400 bucks, that's like a lot of money there. We could uh, do better by buying it off the shelf. So that's a thing to look at. Um, so num task number one is, I mean, well, for one thing, we can draw up like a, you know, kind of a rough, rough sketch of the hub in FreeCAD, uh, or just make it look like a cylinder and do a simple hub on that, and then we can refine the, the shapes as we go along. But now, the bolt lug pattern make that fit a regular car wheel. So, car wheels, car wheel bolt pattern, what is it? Google it. Car wheel bolt pattern. Yeah, so you can see, um, you know, five lug, five lug. Tirerack.com has wheel, wheel, wheel information. Okay, I got more. I also have more information on this paper. I'm going to keep looking at this. I won't do yeah, this. Yeah, keep it on. Um, Five wheel pattern. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, they they apparently have a bunch of bunch of them. Like, I guess five by four, four and four and a quarter. Yeah. So we have to basically specify. Okay, we've got. Well, which is a standard one? That's that's the number one question to look for. Because if you want access anywhere, we want to say, okay, which is the easiest to find, right? Of which are there the most out there, so that we don't have a hard time finding this. You know, whether you go to a junkyard or from a from new online place, um, question would be, what is the most common five bolt pattern? Common bolt pattern for car wheels. Does that exist or does everybody make all different kind of stuff? Um, well, yeah, they say there's a whole bunch of um, yeah um, wheel bolt pattern 101 is what we need but that's that's um, <clears throat> you know somebody can take a look at that and maybe make a suggestion for what is the best route to go with respect to using a wheel that's relatively small and um, yeah so for example five by four and three quarters and five by five inch the small pattern is extremely common as Camaro, Corvette, Chevelle, GM cars take the five by four and three quarter inch pattern okay well let's just say five and Five by four and three quarter inch is quite common, according to this article. Um, that's a start, but you know we don't know until we. we what we want to do is, um, I think like when someone's building it, like a junkyard is a, actually a really good place because I mean, car wheels are car wheels, an old one or a new one, um, they will work. Let's let's make an assumption that we're gonna do like for now the four and three quarter. Five by four and three quarter. So smaller rather than larger, because we just got a golf cart, which has got small wheels. The larger the wheel, the more traction it's gonna get on terrain. But we don't wanna make it too large. So use a small one, like a small car tire kind of deal. Um so let's you know, let's do something like Five by four and three quarter inch. So we can get a person working on that. We can get a person on the on a shaft. We can get a person on the 
actual wheel mount plate. So there's three three rolls right there. Um, yeah, cast from 3D printed stuff. Casting would be good, like aluminum hubs. I don't know if people make aluminum hubs, but yes, casting of simple 3D printed molds that could be put into plaster of Paris. It's an easy way to do it. And is that uh, Katrina speaking? This is Anthony making a little bit of noise. I was okay. trying to say something. Um, because yeah. this problem that we have with, we're trying to find parts for coppers or mounting brackets or like it's just such an enormous time sink. And uh, this is one of the things that drove me to investigate uh, milling quite a sure. bit over the last years, actually. Yeah. Because you can, you can make your own stuff, right? You can so, mill it. You don't need to mill it because you can also torch it pretty easily. Like if you talk about a bolt pattern uh, for a wheel, you can make that yourself pretty easily. So as long as we get a, we, we do need the, the coupler, the hub, yeah. that we need. And that, the last case resort is millet, but then you uh, got to find it. Yeah. Uh, fi I mean, if we got a hundred bucks per wheel, I would say probably, I would say a rough estimate is probably a hundred bucks a wheel. Like if you get it from a fab shop and the fab shops are like 75 bucks an hour, you know, um, at least. Right, so it's at least like a hundred bucks per wheel, possibly like a hundred fifty. So that brings your budget there six to six hundred just for getting the wheels on the motors. Which that's why doesn't make sense. That's why. I want. But uh, if you, that's yeah. why I mean, um, casting and milling yourself. Yeah. Like I know it sounds like yeah. a lot of bother. It no, like casting buying is stuff a, off the shelf is better, but but it's like it just takes a long time to find what you need, and half the time you can't really find what you really need. Like we're using car wheels here when it's not really a car. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. just being able to make stuff, the more we can go upstream, the more uh, possibilities are allowed for the design process, and it really happens faster. And it is. It is. Of and that's why the GVCS has all those machines in there, and which, and which we don't have right now. So the hey, idea is to build them as fast um, as possible. We can print with um, carbon fiber reinforced nylon now. Or some yeah. other high strength materials. Maybe it might actually make some That's... sense to print. Probably not. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you could seal the rim with just some sealant. Worst so case, you can. You can. I mean, okay. So plastics are. You can get to 3D printing at 10,000 psi uh, strong materials. Like, uh, let's see what materials out there. So yeah, some of these, as you mentioned, the reinforced plastics. Those go up to about that. About 10 maybe even up to like 15,000 psi yeah. and then aluminum is about 40,000 psi, 38,000 psi. Um, yeah. okay. Worst case That's scenario, but which is not, not too unrealistic, is 3D printing a, a piece that you can then cast using aluminum using like zinc zinc aluminum alloy which can be melted on a stove top yeah. so that would be you know if we really have to get into trouble on this if we can't find a ready solution i would go right to that because that's that's tech that you can get like right off shelf um and it's building a foundation for the future too because yeah. if we have the ability to do that have it under control like um have done it a couple times and get all the details worked out so it's reasonably efficient yeah. we're not like hesitant to use it yeah, for example, if we have, you know, we design out the full procedure, like if we just document the way to use these, to make these couplers, yeah, it's not going to be too much time for somebody to do that. Uh, we document how you source the metals for this, um, the stove, stove top casting, how you print it, and make, make them all out of plaster of Paris. I don't think it's a bad idea. Now, most complicated part being that you got that little uh, keyway there, which is a quarter inch feature. That's not not bad for casting couldn't do that no problem so we could possibly uh, but that would be the weak spot like if you talk about a hub i mean all that stuff wants to be made out of steel so yeah, exactly. you'd be so. pressing the limits of what aluminum like i wouldn't really trust an aluminum hub on this so yeah, yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't go there unless we're actually casting in steel um, which is like the next level up. 
and I would do induction furnace there. Uh, so that's beyond the scope. Hence, the finding the coupler is probably the easiest idea. Okay, so um, I'm going to say, let's see, so Katie, you're working on getting the coupler. Um, yeah. Okay, that's good. Motor hub. So that's Katie. Um, let's see. Hey, what are you working on back there? Let's see. Um, I've been uh, considering the, the frame still mostly, but I think for some of this stuff, um, I think we have the general measurements, but uh, if there's any, I mean, there's some overall design stuff where everything has to fit together, yeah. so let's get to just trying to drop sketch stuff more out on paper almost, and uh, yeah. um, kind of just, just think about the general design before, you know, even try to continue to refine it in FreeCAD because uh, it end up having to redraw it in FreeCAD a lot uh, sometimes to, because of changes and that actually just takes a lot of time compared to almost just drawing things out and discussing what direction yeah. to take it. Yeah. Well, I would just drop, like what I would do is do the cat, like uh, I would take the frame and I would just put the motors on there, fit the power cube because those are drag and drop, basically merge, merge into FreeCAD and start seeing how it looks so i could do that um the assembly yeah so yeah i get it i guess you get the frame pretty much like you want it are you wanting to keep the frame fairly cubic or you need to go to yeah, refine it more i mean five by eight by, i mean five by eight by four it's not a I guess the thing I was trying to figure out with the bench was I changed, or I started, well, you can see slide five. I started sketching yeah. some things because I was thinking, well, the bench, it doesn't have braces. The back of it isn't this way. So I was just going to integrate the bench as a separate module that also has bracing. And rather than bolt the stuff in because this is like, well, that's a vehicle. So it seems yeah. to make more sense to just weld everything together, forget yeah. bolts or anything like that, even though it's, and be made modularly, yeah. it just seems more sensible to weld things. You I can think, weld right? like a reinforcing vertical, which is like the side of the, the seat, and then you span yeah. between those two verticals. Yeah. Yeah, what I was trying to draw, I guess, or sketch earlier on slide five was, yeah, just making like the whole bench and thing kind of like a, a reinforcement uh, uh, a module that it can just be yeah yeah if it well if we can get it yeah. inside there then it can just be welded in and it will reinforce the whole structure yeah that's um, right because it's that lengthy, the bench. yeah we could use reinforcement down the middle where the bench is going to be so um, and it'll have some angles there I, well I had changed the bench so that it was straight instead of having an angle back which I don't think matters but it, it'd probably be good to have some angles there that add strength. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be good. Um, and I guess the, let's see, so far as getting details on some of the frame parts, I guess that's a matter of, um, well, it, there's probably a few questions that I guess can be refined later as far as bolt patterns of different things that get bolted on, like uh, yeah. even the roof. Um, I, I don't know that we have the, that would be the solar panels. They're the roof, I guess, right? So we just have to know the, the bolt patterns for those. Uh, I think they can be, if it's, two solar panels or whatever is they can probably be sealed to the top that way it's what they're resistant but I, I guess we don't know the I don't know the exact size of those so well uh, we do uh, um, but I the, assume the, the frame is uh, no, we got those the panel size we've got yeah the 
I guess that's... Mm -hmm. Well, you, you've used them before, and you have some panels, I guess. Is, yeah. So you yeah, know what... That same one. We've got one of those here. To some degree. Yeah. The one that's uh, linked in the part library um, is what we have. Okay. Okay, so which... Okay, that's the generic part library. I see a link up here. So oh, open source golf. Some of the, go. the bench. Anthony, would you be able to drop the interface plate, which is just a square plate in the bolt pattern for the motor? Can you do FreeCAD? Um, I could try FreeCAD. I don't know how it'll work here. Let's see, the interface plate. Okay. Just from the drawing here? Yeah, yeah, uh, we have a file for the the motor already in a part library, so you can just take a look at that and draw it off of that, because it's already in FreeCAD. Oh, yeah. oh, but isn't it already drawn if it's already in FreeCAD? Well, yeah, but we, need, not... we got the motor, but we need the motor plate, <clears throat> so that's a separate part. Oh, I see, oh, I see you're talking about the part that it, okay. Yeah, the so part the... on the car that the motor will attach to. Yeah, okay. yeah, so there'll be a plate that would attach to the frame. Could weld it to the frame. Yeah. Okay. And um, let's see. Adex Mont, what's your name? Is that Adex Mont? Is that your username or? I don't know if he can hear you. Oh, he says Alfonso is his Alfonso, name. Alfonso, yeah. All right. Um, can you do free cut, Alfonso? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you can, uh, one thing we can do, <laughs> very simple exercise, draw up the panel, drop the PV panel, the dimensions are in the part library, you think you could do that? So the part library is an open source golf cart page, wait, um, okay, there needs to be a link to that solar panel in a working document, uh, where is it? What happened to that? Um, where's our solar panel? Pictures, art library. We just need a simple um, placeholder for the solar panel. And I don't see it. Okay, I'll put a link to that solar panel and maybe uh, have you draw it up in FreeCAD, Alfonso. Um, so let's see, that's the... Uh, 
it'll be on a PV document. All right, so specifications in terms of size of the panel, they are on this document right here. So control C. So I'm gonna put a page called PV panel. And specs of PV panel. So basically like a rectangular box structure that looks as close to the solar panel as possible. Um, PV panel. So under this golf cart solar panel I'm going to put in a link to its specs. panel for specs. Okay. So, Alfonso, the, the specs are there under under the PV panel, you can see the PV specs. So if you can draw that up and um, upload it over there to the wiki, or just put a link in the work document, that'll be your task if you can do it. Are you up to the challenge? Who are you talking to? Talking to Alfonso. Okay, sorry. Yeah. And I'm gonna put Alfonso on a solar panel. Tag team between Katarina from last time. So we know who's doing what. panel. And Abe's going to be conceptualizing or Abe, um, look at, I just want to point you to this thing like if you talk about 3D printed chairs, which uh, I don't know if they fit here because uh, they're not going to be Structural. 3D, oh, 3D printed plastic, like the chair bench. Yeah. Or seats. Um, I assume that a bench, just a single bench, was uh, yeah easier. But you, I mean, bucket seats, I guess, are doable too. That might give more room for other things. I'm kind of just trying. Um, yeah, so working on the, the frame and just going to draw something yeah. into the frame. So, are you working on a frame? Okay, so we're going to talk about Well, it, I'm drawing the trying to draw sketch some stuff into the the frame itself. I'm I had the bench before and I think I made it a little bit smaller cuz I was thinking well that, you know, it should be smaller than the frame itself, but really it should just fit 
inside the frame. Uh, it should be the yeah. full width of are the you, inside, I think. So, are you doing FreeCAD or are you just doing concepts? Um, yeah, I, I started doing FreeCAD because it's just going to, you know, clone the rest of the frame there, um, those other sides, and try to get the measurements and, and then uh, do some sketches in, in Sketcher and FreeCAD. Um, I mean, what I was going to sketch some things, but what I drew up in the um, in the slide, uh, was it slide five before, I think is pretty close. Unless, yeah. unless instead of a bench, we're going to do bucket seats or something. But either way, it could be similar. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the question is, how do we avoid edit conflict? But I think if you just upload it, just as soon as you have your file, just upload it right to the wiki. And then what we can do is, like, if you got some additions, I can just borrow that into my document, just merge it into my document. Yeah, and I can I can sketch into the um, the frame itself and then and just separate the module into being two files. And then, well, and then maybe, you know, in one file for the full assembly, whenever we get to that. But yeah, um, can always just separate everything, so. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah.
Alright, so I got the frame with all six sides. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna let's see, I'm gonna upload the frame right in real time here, so four inches wide. Four inches wide. Oh, uh, I think we have a problem with the motor drawing. What is it? It seems to be the wrong size. It's oh, hard what's, to tell. What's wrong with it? Let's see. There's two different drawings for the motors. There's, in the Google slides, there's two different drawings. Which one should I use? Okay, go to the part library and download the so open source golf cart page in the part library just download that from the part from the I gallery got, I got that yeah I got the F uh, wheel motor dot FC yeah. STD is that accurate that model yeah. that solid model so yeah as I good. was talking to Kitty earlier she said she she'll know but she said that she constrained some things in there uh -huh. but what we talked before, I think last time, was the measurements weren't coming out on that. And it's because if there are constraints missing, then the CAD itself, the bolt holes won't be exactly right until they're constrained correctly relative, you know, to the dimension. So the, it's better to just go by the, the whatever the numbers are, the dimensions. Well, why yeah, don't so I try to fix this model? Then I can just go for the drawings and try to go through it and dimension it all. Easy, right? Sure, the dimensions that are missing are um, on page 12 of the manual about sort of the shaft height and taper. Okay. Uh, let's take a look there. Okay. I'm uh, looking at the Google presentation slides thing. You've so, got, from you from there, know. you'll see a link under the picture of the mother that's to okay. the WG catalog PDF. And a little note that says page 10. <coughs> so it's okay, based off of that. Uh -huh. 
There's two mortars drawn here. There's oh. two drawings, actually. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, look, on, look on slide 11. Uh, this is slide 12. Okay, slide 11. Okay, that's so the picture. If we go slide 12, there's a nice drawing here, and that's what you make the CAD model from, right? Okay. Yeah, um, um, not, okay. don't use that drawing, use the full catalog, which is linked in the bottom right hand corner. Oh, okay. Okay, because there's two drawings there. There's one on the top and there's one on the bottom. They're not the same model. I know. Yeah, it's, um, this model is the one, um, actually, these are the same, it's just, um, how, what the alignment is of those ports. Um, but if you open the PDF, Okay, yeah. There are actually a couple pages of specs. Okay. So, if, so uh, we're we're looking at, at, between yeah, we're looking at the 276 series. Okay, there we go. With one inch tapered square mount. Too bad they don't give you a drawing of this, the actual shaft. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what they have it down at the bottom. The, the one inch tapered is of the shaft. Oh, the, okay. Yeah. That's on page 12. Yeah, you can do the kind of shaft. Thanks. It's all done. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably good. Yeah. So you're doing the mounting plate to mount the motor to the frame? Uh, yeah, I was doing that, but then um, okay. I got worried that the model no, right, right, right. No, I'm, I'm happy to have this be a collaborative model because it was my first model and I want somebody to okay, yeah, for sure. yeah, check it out and, and work on it. That's great. So, and I, um, I just want to know, I was just um, making sure that I'm doing the wheel hub part instead of the frame and mounting. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I have no clue. I did the tutorials and stuff. I'm not into free cat really. This is fusion, that'd be a lot faster.
So is the idea that the motor itself appears too too small or no? Or is it pretty good? No. I'm just double checking things. Um, I don't see any constraints on any of the... Um, I don't know how you drew this, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> like it looks like it's pretty accurate, but I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm not, it's just the so from the first drawing, I have some um, some measurements. If you're looking in the catalog, sorry, so I wouldn't look there necessarily. Okay, I, I should be honest. I don't know how to use FreeCAD well enough to really do this in a reasonable time frame. I'm basically just learning as I do it. Um, just. Like in Fusion 360, you can just roll back the model, and you... Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm having trouble with that, too. Um, you know so, yeah, maybe... I can, I can, like, do it sort of either step-by-step step again, or, like, yeah, rolling it back to an earlier version. I haven't... Yeah, I mean, do, like, straight the shaft. Um, I mean, and, like, um, you see the model. The model is kind of like a program, right? And so you have a pad, and you have a sketch, and you have another pad and a sketch, right? But like in Fusion, what I do is I can just play the program step by step, so the part just sort of appears before your eyes the way you drew it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how to make that happen here. And also, no. when I go to the sketches, I don't see any constraints, but like all the parts are in the right place. Um. So in uh, some of them are traced. Uh, some of them are from the diagram. Um, and I sort of know, well, but, but it is, like you were saying, sort of difficult with the sketches and pads for me to figure out, um, I, like, where exactly the constraints are that I put on. Like, I can't see them all at once. I just know that, like, the, um, the plate itself has constraints on it. So, uh, what else has constraints? Certain lengths. I do know that that the the width of the shaft now that I have the the dimensions of the shaft are not there. Um, I think I should take it upon myself to learn FreeCAD, and then I could teach other people because there's the basics of CAD, and there's FreeCAD. I'm like, um, yeah, I just have to learn FreeCAD. I think it's not as easy for me. Um, constraint system can be a little bit picky at first, and sometimes FreeCAD is just buggy, and, well, if it, if it tends to act up, then I just, like, close it, save it, close it, and start over. Mm -hmm. Saving often helps. And yeah. I, I don't know, I end up using 0.16 so much that I'm not sure how much better 0.17 is, and I know we probably, anybody that's starting out should probably just be using 0.17. It did, so I would try 1.16, and it was buggier than 1.7. Um, one seven isn't bug free. It does seem a little smoother. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, I'm not sure how much they improved the constraint solver because sometimes they have issues with that. It, as I said in the text, like I had looked at that file and I was amazed how well accurate it was, but it didn't look like it had any constraints. And so uh, I've been trying to make macros, and I was curious about. Uh, how, how to uh, constrain that that primary shape, like the, the square with the rounded corners is like the first step, I think, on that. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, the rounding is weird. <laughs> I tried to do that, and that was actually very hard. Yeah. Uh, but I did make a macro <laughs> recording of a way that I did that. But I think th there's another way, and I think most people would probably do it. They would just draw a square and constrain that um, from corner to corner to the origin symmetrically. Which is the easiest way to like constrain things easily. They're mm -hmm. really like, symmetrical, and then then I just add um, what do you call it? fillets on the corners afterwards, which I usually don't do because I usually try to avoid using a lot of detailed fillets and things in the models because we usually don't need them. They just add a lot of uh, size to the files, but that that may be an easier way to do that. I, there's lots of ways to do it, so it's. I haven't figured out how to share my screen on Ditsy yet. Does anyone know how to do that? Uh, bottom left hand corner next to the hand. I 
Is that my motor in there, Marcia? Yeah. Cool. It's the right size. It's fine. But uh, I was kind of surprised it's tiny. It is tiny. Yeah. But it's powerful, so... I'm wondering if there's a difference between how I put in constraints and what people normally use for constraints. Because there aren't a lot, but there are, um, as I was sizing in the sketches, it's like under the sketch, a list of certain constraints. But since yeah. there are like 10 different sketches, you can't see them all at the time. Well, normally you put, um, if you see, you see the diagram in the catalog, right? Mm -hmm. There's basically um, every one of those little numbers for the dimensions and the angles. And you have to yeah, have uh, yeah, so I was using those um, yeah. in the first image. Um, here we are. So, yeah. I'm not familiar with most. CAD stuff, but I forget probably is a little different, but what over time, and I think some people said too, was that the best way to constrain a free CAD was try to use as much of the symmetrical constraint as possible. Okay. And not try to define that many numbers when you can help it, but you know, that depends on sketch, whether it has a lot of symmetry. Or not. I mean, if you can take advantage of symmetry because your partner design is fairly symmetrical, then that, that will. It will let you constrain it faster. Okay. Um, like if it's a square, the sort of constraint you see is is the opposing corners, like uh, like quadrant one and quadrant uh, the three. Or, yeah, quadrant three, the corners. Um, there's there's a constraint. Uh, what's it called? It's called. I can't see it at the moment because it's. Uh, I think it just called the symmetry constraint but any of those that are more symmetrical the better i don't usually use uh, i mean obviously on the corners and stuff like that you have to you know use the art constraints and so on but if you make all of the things equal that are equal to start with and constrain it as you go usually the solver is just friendlier like if you draw it up it, it depends. Sometimes it is easier to draw it first and then constrain it after, but usually it's easier to like try to constrain like simple parts and fully constrain it and then add more and then it'll become unconstrained. Because the solver sometimes is, it's the software issue, I think, is the, the constraints not always perfect. Mm.
Do you know how to make um, construction geometry cab? I do not. I'm just gonna, I'm afraid I'm not able to get anything done in FreeCAD. Um, especially, I'm pretty sure the bolt holes, they're not um, spaced according to the drawing. So, like, um, I hesitate to take responsibility for, like, making a part and then when it goes time to print the part or cut the part, it's not gonna be the right size. So, because now I'm, I'm, can you see my screen actually? I can show what I mean. Um. I don't know what uh, the motors look good to me, and my I'm putting them into the um, the full. Cast. I can also uh, I'll shine them out. later. I'll so show you if you if you want to do the mount plate just according to the diagram. Um, I can refine the model. Okay, that's good. Idea. Constraints can always be added later. You just have to update the files. But I mean, if you draw the mount plate, you, you can drop it draw it separately just by the numbers. I think that are, you know, in the documents the same way the motor was drawn. It looked like all the numbers were there. So it it is probably a matter of needing the construction geometry and so on. Though. I actually have a, a half hour long meeting that I have to go to. But um, what's um? Going hey, what's until this? yeah. Oh no! It ends it. It ends in a half an hour, doesn't it? Well, right. We, we, yeah, you have to get going, Katie, right now. Yeah, unfortunately, I just heard. I just found out about this meeting. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Oh, not a um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Let us know what you found out. And yeah. Good luck then. Yeah. I'm going to, I have contacted the manufacturer um, to see if they know of um, these hubs available. Otherwise, I'll just make something according to your drawing and what I've seen online and, and the, the dimensions of the motor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I'll submit it. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Katie. Bye. Bye, sir.
camera is behind behind you.
I cut the meeting part. You bailed on those guys, did you? <laughs> oh, cool. We had any constraints. This is what I was talking about. Oh, cool. Like... Yeah, I'm definitely. This, see, this is what I'm saying. Like, it, this makes way more sense doing constraints this way. Yeah. This is. And they're so, all visible. It makes it kind of um, complicated drawing, but. Yeah. It's not fully like, uh, like The lines should change color when they're fully constrained. I don't know. Um, a gold black or something. Um. Oh, I see some of your screen. I'm having a little trouble with the audio, but yeah, yeah it looks like you have a lot of blue uh, construction lines. Construction. Um, the blue lines are construction lines. Uh, how do you talk about construction and um, oh. the? Let's see. It, uh, on, on the picture, most before the constraints. So, like to the left of the red. The, what is that? The red dot. I got you. Yeah, yeah. That's the sort of thing I need. Yeah, I don't know why I did it from. Um, yeah. I made everything construction. <laughs> trying to see. Yeah, so you would select all the the construction lines that you don't want to be uh, construction lines, and then and it will toggle them all to um, actual geometry lines. The, okay. Yeah. That's pretty good, sure. I it's think it's actually. Let's get yeah, I guess to some you have to use the control key. Is it, well, no, you don't have to use the control key in FreeCAD. It's kind of confusing sometimes, but yeah, so. It's good. It's good. It's done. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I can't. It's hard to see what what the constraints are using, but it. There was. Um, yeah, like, it's not like even infusion. They don't do a very good job on it. And I like it in freaking out here. You've got this list of elements and list of constraints. Yeah. Um, they used to do that in SolidWorks, but they don't do that in Fusion for some reason. Just terrible. Well, like, you really should have that. Hmm. Wouldn't make a complicated sketch like this. You would make, like, you make the piece, like, making a big block and then you put holes in the block instead of doing this where I'm trying to like make the profile of the piece and then just extrude it. So yeah. But I don't know how to do that. I'm just not bothering to try. Extrude. Uh, I like guess I don't understand. The pad is extrude. Oh, just pad it. Yeah, the pad is extrude to, for sketches, but there's also an extrude, um, there's also an extrude function. I think it's trying to remember where it is. I don't usually use it. It's in the draft workbench, maybe, or maybe a part design bench. Um, but I, th those functions are different, I think, because I think extrude, you want to use that when you're actually like designing some material that's extruded. Yeah, I mean, the freak designed along the lines of actual material, especially in point one seven. I think there's like the additive and subtractive. Well, actually, at first I thought additive and subtractive was like related to material machining, but that's not really exactly what they were doing with that. It's more complicated. Yeah. I I think that the pads and everything in that motor they look good. I think it was just the constraints on the bolt pattern that were needed. Yeah, those ones were definitely just eyeballs. Yeah. yeah, but that's the thing. Like, it's fine at this stage to eyeball stuff, and I could have done that with um, the plate. But I'm no, worried but like, someone... You had already warned me that, like, you want to constrain it from the get-go. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, generally speaking, that's a good approach. It does take a long time, but, like, it depends what you're trying to It's faster, I think, actually, if you constrain it first. But it doesn't have to be. I mean, it looks really good just, just without it, so... I mean, the way I was surprised how well that word traced out because I don't, I haven't really traced stuff like that. Uh, we haven't done the tracing method for a while. There, there are because some nice. limitations I've noticed already. Like, I, I would kind of hope that to get that taper on that shaft, I would now be able to go back and 
modify one of the two faces that are circles, but I can only layer this back. I can still modify those constraints to change the width, which is not accurate right now, but it, but there's I can figure out how to get that to taper. Okay, I think I think I know what you mean there. The taper. I think there's different ways to do that, especially in 0.17, because I did play with 0.17 a little bit. There's like additive and subtractive features, and and you can, yeah, there's different ways to do it. The way I guess I would do it in 0.16 was I, I think a sweep is the easiest. You draw two sketches mm -hmm. like some distance from each other, and you just make one circle one size, and the other circle the other size, and then you just sweep between them, and you get a you get a cone. Or oh, okay. you just, or you just draw a cone, a primitive cone with the dimensions, mm -hmm. and then you do a boolean operation to cut off the tip of the cone. Right. That, that's Avery, the other are, you, are you in FreeCAD right now? Would it be possible to just screen share with you so you could demonstrate just like um, where, which buttons to click? Let's see. I, I missed a bunch of your audio, the audio because it broke up, but I think you understood. Um, uh, you're asking if I can show some some of the yeah the the buttons and stuff that yeah. way I, I don't mind doing that um i think the the videos on freecab 101 are good they're actually kind of fast mm -hmm. what i do occasionally because i'm not familiar with a bunch of the functions and actually a bunch of the workbenches in freecad but because uh, i just end up using the same stuff over and over again which is a little bit of a, a problem you kind of get used to certain things but Mm -hmm. Yeah, the um, I don't know. Sometimes I watch videos on YouTube because there's a lot of that stuff. And if you follow okay. along while you watch the video, if you follow that's along right. and do what they're doing, if it's a simple tutorial, that's a good way to do it. But I'm gonna I'll, I'll try to share yeah, my really screen. I can. It, it is good to like screen share and just yeah point out different ways to do things or different ways to think about it because yeah. there's, there's all like a multitude of ways to do stuff and some way might be a little better or faster than that's the only way you're going to learn stuff is just by like sharing different methods why yeah part design pre-cap documentation on cones you're right about googling googling is important I would guess, yeah, maybe this additive loft is kind of what we're talking about. Yeah, this is sort of exactly what I was thinking, the additive off, but it's interesting because I don't know how to sketch not on a plane of another item. Okay. On the additive and subtractive, that's kind of a new thing in, in FreeCAD 0.17. Okay. I think there's a generic, um, there's generic primitives too. Uh, those those subtractive and additive ones are so complicated sometimes that I, at first I didn't understand those. I think I have a better understanding. Mm -hmm. But the way that they like, they're like Boolean by their nature. So okay. when you like combine them in different ways, weird things happen. Like okay. if you try to subtract from an additive, it, it, it gets confusing to me at least so far. But I would go with the non-additive or subtractive primitives, which I think okay. are, yeah, I, I would not Is use that, unless you really know. Part design seems really keen on them. Should I be looking at a different workbench? Uh, let's see, for, I, let's see, I don't even have 0 0.17 open, but I'm gonna have to, unfortunately, FreeCAD Major annoyance for me with FreeCAD is not being able to open two different versions at the same time unless yeah. uh, I think there's a way, but well, besides using a virtual machine. Um, let's see, I think part design. I mean, you have uh, to switch so back and forth. Here. 
between part design or part workbench and part design workbench? Yeah, depending on what you need. And sometimes I try okay. to use the complete, but whenever I switch to complete, it there's like buttons that I commonly use in some of the workbenches that don't show up. Like mm -hmm. one in particular is that I don't use the draft workbench much, but I use the clone function in there sometimes. Okay. And it doesn't show up when you go to the complete workbench. So I'm like, yeah, I, part of that is probably needing to edit and customize three CAD more, which I haven't actually done that much because it's kind of simpler just to switch work benches. It keeps you in a certain workflow. I mean, the benches are designed that way, I think. Right. I'm pretty excited to know enough that I could start writing code. That's, I would feel much more comfortable. <laughs> hey, do you know how to upload a file to the wiki? Upload a file? Yeah. yeah. So... If you are in the wiki, yes. uh, I don't know if you're sharing or not, uh, but if you just like the links um, that Martin already made the, the like, empty links for, the parts that are going into the all part, if you click on one, it'll be like, oh, we don't have that resource yet, upload it. So if you just, it's like, it's like creating a new page, you search for a page that doesn't exist, and then it'll give you a link to create a new one. It's sort of the same thing. Like, you make a link to nothing, okay. and then clicking on it will give you the space to upload. Okay. Did you try that out? Did it show up? Um, I'm still figuring out how to log into the wiki. Ah, uh -huh. I'm going to try using part workbench. Mm, I don't want to make a new one. Oh, how come? That's exactly what I want.
We were able to log in. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if I have a password to go. I believe it's well. Are you all having trouble logging into the wiki? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but I think I'm pretty close to getting it done. There's always an upload uh, function on the on the left menu of the uh, yeah the leftmost menu of Open Source Ecology Wiki. It says upload file. It's kind of under the tools section and near the bottom, but. Uh, sometimes it's easier just to edit the page and um, make a link with the file name you want and then click the red link and it'll ask you to upload like that's usually how we lay it lay the like the gallery or whatever out ahead of time Well, if we add some wheels to this, this thing could almost drive now. You see it? Cool. <laughs> That's great. Oh, the screencast shows again. Uh, yeah, look in the document, um, work doc, working doc. So you can see yeah, it there. Yeah, it really helps see that, you know, like that's where the mounting plates will mount those on. Yeah, so mounting plates would be to, from the frame to, to kind of drop down over the motors to mount them like that. And we just need some wheels. And we're ready to rumble. Ready to go golfing. All right. Okay. Well, it's uh, it's 4 p.m., so let's check in where we are. So, um, I got the mounting plate done. It's nice. uploaded. But I don't know how to link to it. Okay. Um, let's see, can you log into the wiki? Because you got to be able to do that. Yeah, I got that done. Okay. I did. I got it uploaded. I'm on the file, the page that shows the file that you uploaded. I don't have like, I think I'll just copy the link. Uh, copy uh -huh. the link, okay. So return to the software page. Oh, and... All right, we got, um... Well, looks like we got a PV panel. Let's see if I can uh, merge it right here from Alfonso. Thank you. So let's see what happens when I merge it. All right, it's on the bottom. Yeah, that's it. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I think we should put it on top, though. Very cool. Um, here, let's move it up. Okay, the motor mounting plate is uploaded onto the, uh, the wiki page. Okay, cool. In the part library section, in the section of the hydraulic motor. Well, look at this. We are we got this panel on a roof already. 
we're collecting parts. This is an example of what collaboration can do. So if there's in principle, if there was a bunch of people and putting in all parts, we could be like, okay, now merge everything together into the final, final thing. But that's cool. I mean, look at that. That's a, that's a panel. View. Can I say though that uh, to be fair, it would it would be really it would take maybe thirty minutes for somebody in like Fusion three hundred and sixty to just draw the whole thing from the beginning. Like it's we're just it's going extremely slowly, which is like I know we're all getting started, but and certainly me, especially with recap, but it can be a lot better. Is what I mean. Yeah.
All right, so let's uh, kind of wrap up here. But yeah, got the file uploaded. Oh, wait, let's see what happened here. Power on PC, upload file. Just making sure I'm uploading all the files. Let's see. And um, wheel plate. People getting open the wiki is unreachable right now. Um, let's try it. I'll just try it. Here. Right. Trying to upload the nope. files and make sure. Works fine for me. Okay, there we, there it is. Okay. Yeah, uh, we've got that. So, Anthony, yes, I see a motor mount plate. Let me see if. Uh, if I can merge it right into the file merge motor mount plate <coughs> yeah yeah it looks looks good I have to flip it around um, there it is um, Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's pretty good. So we got a few parts added to the uh, to the golf cart. <coughs> if you look at my uh, screen. So I, got, I inserted the power cube. I put in the motors in there, the frame, the solar panel, and the mount plate, which is not in position yet. Uh, but there it is. We got merged. This is all merging files from the uh, from the part library. So that's really good. 
Uh, now we need some wheels and a, and a hub coupler. Um, Katie, what's the latest on, um, on a hub coupler? Any luck on finding sources? Um, not, not, nothing like what we had for the motor yet, but um, hopefully in a couple, well, maybe on Monday, I'll have some direction uh, as to where to get for something that's specifically well suited to this, but if not, I'll just keep Googling. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, then, and then if, if nothing, I, I know how easily I can get stuck in a Google trap, so, so if I don't find it by mid next week, I'll just give us a rough draft. Yeah. The Google trap of searching forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, but that's good. That's good. So it's coming along um, quite a bit. Um, yeah, next would be to, yeah, just uh, see, see if we can round up those parts. I guess if we are having trouble on a, on a coupler part, Katie, what, did you like email some, some of the, some, someone yeah. you found online? Yeah. Uh, since it seems like the retailers aren't that interested in finding people, I figured the manufacturers would know. Um, so I contacted them. Yeah, let's see now. How do we keep track of that? So can you maybe put a one of the slides? Unfortunately, it's a... Oh, sure. Like, just say uh, who you... Yeah, like, a link I... to who? Who did you contact? Or... Um, yeah. So that if other people just are... I'll just say, like, on this website, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. Right, because what's the best strategy for that? Um, I mean... One thing is like, you know, I, I go to my local supplier here who, who has all kinds of parts. That's one way to do it. Otherwise, um, when you Google for one inch uh, tapered hub, like, um, does a lot of stuff come up or? Uh, I haven't found a schematic for one inch specifically um, because they're all like one and a half, one and a quarter, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, but then, yeah, if I, if we, I could just, yeah, pull a schematic for any one of those and then modify it to only be one inch. Yeah. I'm a little confused about the taper. It says one colon eight. I'm assuming that's rise over run for that, that angle. But when I do that in the model, it doesn't look right. But it doesn't give me the dimensions of the larger end of the shaft and the smaller end. Okay, so in the specs you're finding something like, so so on, you're looking at the surplus center listing? Mm-hmm. Okay, what's it say um, there? Actually in the diagram, I should check the surplus center listing. Yeah, like we kind of have to think, like I'm not familiar with this, these tapers so much, but let's see, what's it say? So, one inch tapered, I don't know, I mean, it just says one inch tapered, that's it. Um, Is there I maybe mean, an SAE standard for that? I sometimes that's, I mean, it's, it's automotive, basically, right? So, um, I, I'm not familiar with those tapers, but... One would think that there's probably got to be some standards listing for tapers yeah. like that for yeah, wheel mounts. <laughs> well, like I googled one inch tapered, one inch tapered uh, bushing. I found something on Amazon here. Let's see. I know sometimes those diagrams too. They they only give you a certain amount. Of information, the numbers in the, the 2D CAD uh, diagram, and, and sometimes you just have to calculate it, and that's how they intended. Well, if you go by certain numbers, the CAD should draw it and figure it out. Um, yeah. Depending on what type of CAD you have, and they use different things that sometimes you just have to figure out a way to calculate it. If if the drawing shows a um, 
mm. a side view or something. But then again, it may not give enough of that at all. Yeah. Mm. Um, tapered bushing. Yeah, I mean, they have they have those things called tapered bushings. I found one for on Amazon Prime. Like, there's the link. I don't know if it's the right thing or not, but okay. So that's the next step. So maybe like uh, Google on Amazon and try to see if we could get confident on finding something that makes sense. That's like the missing link. Cause okay, okay. say say we f find something like like I pointed to on Amazon there. Okay, that's like say that fits over the the hub. Well, I don't know where to go from there, but if if that actually fits then we could do something mm -hmm. like okay just weld a plate to that to ma match our bolt pattern for the wheel so that'll be one one acceptable way to go and i'll be like okay 13 dollars, sure that's not a problem um yeah we could do that um but yeah yeah we'll have to keep looking at that uh so yeah that's like the main next step to find a connection to the wheels and then maybe finish up abe if you want to like maybe work on getting the seat put into the existing CAD. I Let's see, did I upload that? Um, I think I was having some trouble uploading. But if you look at the... I put a GC full assembly. Uh, and also on... So on the open source golf cart page, I kind of kept the record there. So starting with the frame and the wheel motors, adding the power cube, then adding the solar panel so i'll just keep like a thread a visual thread of how the whole assembly goes together but as far as the file goes this file gc full assembly uh, no it's just got one one thing there but i just i'm trying to upload my latest one which is what you see in a picture pictures uh, i wasn't i was getting an error for some reason Let's see if I can do that as we speak here. So, Abe, probably, like, if you download that one, that would be the correct file to work from in terms of adding more components to this overall design. Uh, and basically, as soon as you have anything, just re-upload it and label what you uploaded so that even though that may not be the, you know, maybe it's not the not something we want to do, but, but upload everything so we have the array of choices to pick from because memory is cheap and uh, don't keep it on your drive just upload it as soon as you have something so that others can share it and then build from it that's the general principle here um, but yes yeah, so for next steps would be to try to get the coupler uh, all worked out and go from there so maybe um, let's try another uh, design sprint like this see if we can get some more parts and see what we can do by uh, like in two weeks from now and see if we can kind of finalize a little bit more of this but we got some decent progress and and so forth um okay let's see no somehow I'm messing up here it's not letting me upload but i'll, I'll work on that getting this uploaded Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, so Anthony, is, if, if you're working on another platform, if you export it in, uh, in step format, then we can put it into FreeCAD. So... Okay. We have the ability to do that. Really difficult to modify that. Yeah. Depends on what it what it is. If if it's kind of a fixed model, um, I mean, a lot of times we import STLs and so on from parts that are that are known, right? So it, as long as we know it's a fixed, accurate. Part. Okay. Yeah, that makes we sense. don't have to edit so much. It's not it's like the motor. If the motor, if there was just a an STL for that, that we could have downloaded from GrabCAD or something. Yeah. Uh, that, that probably would have been fine, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. As long as it's close oh. enough, but then yeah, you want to make sure that you don't run into trouble of you think you have the right thing and it won't fit in the real build. It's only an issue. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, at this level where we have this very simple structure, like the frame with with motors uh yeah as there's no constraints in terms of like real tight spaces and everything else so yeah that's like, good. you really that'll, don't that'll need work. the motor could basically be the mounting plate and two cylinders or something like one cylinder sticking off the back one cylinder sticking off the front and the mounting plate you don't have to have all these details really yeah um yeah the measurements don't matter. Like I, I noticed that the frame uh, when I was looking at that, it wasn't all lined up, and it wasn't somehow it was like one point zero zero nine eight inches up, uh, different or something than I expected. The corners weren't lined up, but it doesn't matter. I just took measurements, and I had started sketching in the the frame file, but I just copied the sketch to my bench file, and I just started going by the measurements. So, um, just sketch it on that. It took me a while to get. Um, some of the measurements because I'm trying to be a little bit concerned with some of the ergonomics on the on the bench and how easy that'll be to uh, cut and measure and build. But I'm trying to turn the um, I'm trying to think of which way to turn the metal and all that because the way that you turn the width, like the two inch metal strips and all that, matters for ergonomics, like space wise how you can utilize space and all that stuff. So I was trying to figure out the best way to do that because there's different ways to weld that to the frame. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, and start with a quarter by two by two piece of angle as the vertical supports and then work from there. Pretty relatively straightforward. But, but yeah, work with the frame, see, what, see how you can... Uh, yeah. I... I ended up sketching this stuff because kind of sketching it within the constraints of what the frame is, but sometimes I wish it almost work with stock material. I think there's there's ways to do that. I think one way to do that is to use spreadsheets in FreeCAD, I guess, and then establish stock material and then vary the size of the, um, uh, I guess, the, the numbers in the spreadsheet or something, but I haven't, I haven't really got around to doing much of that yet, but I've seen how that can be done. That way you don't end up drawing things um, in so much detail. Because, you know, it's a stock material. It's just... Right. Um, those you know, those should all be coming from libraries. Yeah. Yeah, and ideally... And uh, spreadsheets and yeah. FreeCAD. Yeah, ideally... Yeah, well, I mean, technically when you use the spreadsheet, it's... Well, the numbers are pre-entered, and then you can change certain numbers for the lengths and all that. But And you kind of have to know what the stock lengths are, but... Um, that that might be one way to make stock materials yeah. more preset, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We could use a bunch of those templates where we have those little uh, scripts in FreeCAD. We can just generate all the a lot of different stock stock steel and other parts. Um, it and it isn't really so much materials. Actually, one thing I don't know about the spreadsheets. I know I think I understand how the the number referencing works. Like you literally just type spreadsheet dot um, the column or row the reference cell in the um, in the measurement. Whenever you go to specify the measurements, you just type it in. I think spreadsheet dot whatever you're referencing in the in the sheet. So it's not necessarily preset materials depending on how you lay out the sheet. As I understand, it. I'm not that familiar with the different ways to lay out the spreadsheet itself in there because they're, they're very simplistic spreadsheets they're not very advanced in FreeCAD right but um, it's you can always edit and change the numbers in the spreadsheet and then everything else changes well yeah so, you got to do a script to make to put that into the CAD right yeah yeah, yeah. once you I guess make a sheet from the videos I watched um, you, you can make the sheet you can sheet in real time or or the CAD, but it's it's kind of a referencing thing. So I haven't experimented with enough to see how how robust it is as far as changing each thing. Um, so I guess if you change certain things in the spreadsheet, it might break the the model. But 
I mean, in the case of stock material, you're, you're only worried about one dimension and the other uh, dimensions are fixed, right? Well, you probably want to use the, use the spreadsheets in a way that you're generating the part and in order not to confuse your current working model, you just do that separately and then just merge that part into your working drawing so you don't con get too confused working in one big file. Um, but yeah, that would be good to get a, so, so we can get familiar with that so we can just start generating a bunch of these different stock parts more quickly. But I haven't played with the, the spreadsheets and, and generating your parts in FreeCAD like kind of automatically yet. So we need a lesson on that yeah. from somebody. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there's there's a long list of things that we probably need more uh, yeah. tutorials on again, and I have yeah, a I list, and I started to work on more of that. But uh, it, it it isn't always easy to uh, design all that right. You have to do a good you want to do a good job with that stuff, so it's um, uh, fairly permanent. I really it's like making tutorials. I don't know if there's an easy one to cut my teeth on. If that's more of like a documentation and time and effort thing, but I used to write a lot of curriculum. I do enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's a good way to learn, too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you have a list if, and can pick one that you think would be um, a good candidate, mm -hmm. be happy to take it. I think I made a document okay. to come back with um, a list of scripts or, or examples I was writing, and I was starting to do some video, but after make mistakes and have to redo the videos and so on because I want them to be cut cut fairly well although you can do a lot of editing in Caden live so that's not always not that bad yeah Katie um, the one but, that that we want to have that would be really useful is it's um uh, how do you go from a spreadsheet because FreeCAD has spreadsheets how do you go from a spreadsheet where you just put in parameters like for example you want a square tube mm -hmm. um or some other shape, like an angle that's, and you can select the width of the angle, the height of it, the thickness mm -hmm. of the metal and stuff like that. Um, just the general I, thing where, where then we can generate like whatever the application is, like it could be just like a simple, you know, pipe builder where you're just generating a pipe of different dimensions, uh, but it allows you to do that automatically. That. So you just type in the dimensions in I the think, spreadsheet. I think somebody pointed out an example of that too. There is some sort of tubing builder, right? You, you yeah. remember that merchant? Yeah, I yeah. Don't remember if it's called. No, we builder. have that. I think but... that's based on spreadsheets. Yeah. I think right. it's. I think it uses spreadsheets too. So right. that's that's a ready example to look at. Right. There's a page on the wiki called the Universal Tube Builder. You can take a look at that. So let me just paste that in. But the point is, yes, we have that. But the question is, how do you actually generate that universal tube builder, for example? Um, yeah, uh, I just pasted that in a, in a chat box. That's an example of one thing. I know in general, um, you should do it in SolidWorks. You, you know when you're putting a dimension in on a sketch or a constraint? You can put a variable in, and then you'll have a spreadsheet that can just adjust the variables. It's fundamentally that's, how you do it. It doesn't help much in FreeCAD. That's how it works. It. In FreeCAD, yeah. you in in the um, in the math. Uh, what are they called? The function. There's that function symbol, and in almost all the data entry points, there's that ability to enter just math, like eight minus four, eight times. So you can enter all kinds of arithmetic operations directly. Yeah. And for the spreadsheet like either in the in any of the dimension points where you can do data entry, you just type spreadsheet dot and then I think like the the um, uh, a, ver a variable or cell reference there's some kind of cell reference that way and then it accesses the values hey, in the spreadsheet in. Was... your business going And a bunch of times, for certain things, like gears and certain patterns, OpenSCAD, which I haven't learned enough of 
would actually be better in a lot of cases. Probably not in the cases where you have a lot of sketches and change stuff, but I think actually OpenSCAD already has a lot of things for gears and other things that stuff has already been written by people. Um, there's, there's scripts that do a lot of stuff, but we, we don't usually use that too much lately. Uh, gears and things like that, we just don't draw much or make. So. Not yet. Yeah. Things like planetary gears are very, very useful. Okay. Um, yeah. I got to get going today, but um, good job on the work today. And then, let's, so let's do this again in, in a couple of weeks from now. Otherwise, we have the regular team meeting at 2 p.m. On, on Tuesdays. But, um, yeah, main thing is figure out the coupler. Um, continue continue on the, putting in as many of the parts that we know of that are listed in the, in the part library. Um, yeah, so everybody, good job on us. So you pretty much uploaded everything to the to the wiki which is good so then other people can download it and we can keep building on this until we get it done um yeah let's see anything else to add or oh uh, correct there's no hole in the middle of the mounting plate is there i forgot that no it's I'll correct um, that for the... oh yeah no you, you would need a hole for the shaft right oh, yes. right so something else not as cheap but we can yeah. readily add that yeah so yeah we can keep keep working on the files and Keep uploading, just upload over the, the last version so that we keep a version history of all the parts that are uploaded and go from there. So, yeah, well, good job. So thanks, everybody. And, yeah, let's meet again in two weeks. So, so pretty much I'd say like two to four uh, next Friday, two weeks from now. Uh, try to finish this thing up and go from there. All right? Okay, that's good. Okay, see you guys. Bye. All right. Bye, Ruth. Thanks, everybody.